I'll be reviewing all of the test functions of the DT830 Bravo digital multimeter. There are other very similar meters out there on the market. Harbor Freight and a few other really common stores carry this style of meter. You might see it in yellow as well, but I'm basically just gonna be going through clockwise, showing you how to perform all these tests. I'm also gonna be comparing some of the accuracy of the measurements with other meters. That's not to highlight that this is a low quality product. It's to show you, you know, this, this will get you in the ballpark. If you're just doing some basic little tests here and there, it should be able to get you close enough, but this is by no means a professional product. So just take that into, you know, the context of the video. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first window here is for volts AC, and we have two different resolutions, a 750 and a 200. This test, when you're measuring voltage, it's gonna be in parallel, and it doesn't have to be lo loaded. It, the voltage just has to be present. So when you're using a multimeter, series versus parallel is gonna be very critical to understand your different tests and the measurements that you're making. Go ahead and liven up this terminal block. Let's do the first setting, volts AC 750 resolution. Polarity is not gonna matter for this test. What do I mean by that? Your red and black leads, sometimes they're gonna matter which way, sometimes they don't. Measuring voltage AC, they're not gonna matter. You can see we're coming back 120. Let me get rid of some of that glare for you. Let's try this. I think the glare is probably still there, but hopefully you can see a little bit better. Okay, 121. You can see I can make this measurement both ways. Coming back to 121. Let's try at the 200 resolution. So now you're going to notice that there's a decimal point and I should be able to read tenths. So it's going to be a little bit more accurate of a measurement. Here we're seeing about 118. Let's just do a quick comparison. Volts AC on a professional meter. What are we reading? I'm still reading 120.3 compared to our other meter. So we're gonna be a few volts off. So just something to keep in mind when you're using a meter like this, the accuracy is not gonna be there, but it will let you know. Let's go ahead and go down to DC amperage. That's gonna be the next setting, next window here. And we have all of our different resolutions. I have a 25 milliamp load that I can demonstrate these readings on. So I'm gonna set it here to 200 milliamps, which is the max current that we can carry in this configuration. Pay attention to your ports and what they're rated for. So in my volts, ohms, milliamps, I'm rated to 200 milliamps max. It says here 1000 volts DC and 750 volts AC. I would not be making measurements of that high with this meter. So let's go ahead and get our 25 so something that's gonna be critical for a test like this is it's gonna be done in series. So you notice how on our last test, you know, we did parallel, here's my load. Parallel is gonna be like this. In series, we're gonna use the meter as a jumper wire. So there was a jumper wire here, I've removed it. Now I can go ahead and make my measurement in series. This is a, I believe like a 475 ohm resistor. So it should be pulling about 25 milliamps of current. Okay, 25.7 is what we're getting at the 200 milliamp setting. You're gonna notice, so 25 milliamps is outside of the two, uh, outside of the 20 milliamp setting. So when we're at 20 milliamps of current, probably won't show a reading. I believe that's way of the meter saying that it's out of range. And then it has 2000 microamps and 200 microamps. I don't have anything set up for those tests, but that is the DC amperage in this configuration. Let's go ahead and check out the 10 amp setting. Again, because we're doing an amperage measurement, we're gonna be doing this in series. However, it's gonna be important that we switch our test lead over to this 10 amp DC port for this setting. It does state on this meter, unfused. The technical manual, it had mentioned that there was a way to put a fuse in there. I didn't see anywhere to put a fuse. So please be careful for utilizing this setting. I have a approximately two amp at 12 volt DC load. Okay, that negative sign is showing polarity of flow. Just under two amps. Let's compare that to another meter. See what we're getting back. Let's change out polarity for you. This is showing two amps, about a 10th of an amp short there on that measurement. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and switch this port back. 
there. Okay, next we have the HFE setting. This is for testing transistors, and there's a little bit to this part that I wanted to talk about. You can test an NPN and a PNP type, so those are the two different types. And then we're gonna have these letters here. I had to look up what they mean because testing transistors is not an expertise of mine. It's something I had to look up for this video, but we have Charlie Bravo Echo labeled on both sides, and that's gonna be standing for our collector, base, and emitter. Collector base emitter. I have a Bravo Charlie 517 NPN transistor here. I've located my collector base and emitter. I put them into the appropriate slots. And despite my best efforts, I'm unable to get a reading in this setting. Meter is brand new. I opened it up yesterday, get a little bit of something on there. I've not been able to get this to read properly. I have an alternative for you. If you're going to be using multimeters, really stick to a multimeter that does multimeter functions the best. If you want to do transistors and stuff like that, I'd really recommend a tester like this. This is the same transistor that I just pulled out of this meter that I could not get a reading off of. Go ahead and put it in its, go ahead and put it in its proper slots and I can just press the test function. It's going to go through, test it, gives me a diagram. It auto identifies the type of transistor it is, and then it gives me a readout. This is only about 20 bucks. If you're gonna be doing transistors, I wouldn't recommend a meter like this to rely on. I watched another video where a guy was having to like press and pry on it to get his measurement. So not something that's gonna be accurate and reliable for that. It's already a very inaccurate meter, but now you have a test function that doesn't even function at all right out of the box. So let's go ahead and move on to diode testing. You're gonna see I have these little clips that I slide on these leads, little alligator clips. They don't come with the product. Okay, make sure you're putting your leads in your proper ports. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, do our diode test. It's important to note that your readout is gonna be in millivolts. So I'm getting about 543 millivolts and we'll go ahead and test our diode the other way and nothing. So that says that this diode is good. Look again at what our readout is. Okay, well now that function doesn't work anymore. So that's awesome. Let's see if we can read resistors. Okay, well the meter's broken. Couldn't even film a video showing you all the different functions. That should go ahead and show you the quality of this product. Um, I would say one out of 10 for a multimeter. Hope that helps. Just wanted to take a quick measurement. You can see the internal of our resist. The internal resistance of our meter over here is essentially has been shorted out and rendered it useless for all measurements. So there you go. So I just wanted to show you all what happened during filming is when twisting this meter lead, it was able to pop out, break that solder and just completely open up the circuit. I mean, I've barely use this thing at all. I would say this is the worst multimeter I've ever used. The quality is so poor. This, the construction of it's so poor. Please don't buy and use this meter for so many reasons, that being one of them. Uh, and you all saw in the video how easily that happened. I mean, I was just setting down the meter and gently moving the lead around and he was able to break like that. So worst multimeter ever, please don't buy it.